Something I want you to know about the verb conjugation. As you know, the verb changes depending on who the subject is doing the action. Remember that a verb is an action or a state of being, but most of the verbs are actions. The subject pronoun is who or what is doing the action. So we conjugate the, the verb in English just this one time in the present form. So for example, I walk to school every day. You walk to school every day. He, she, it walks to school every day. Remember, third person singular can also be a person's name or your daughter, New York, the school. It's still third person singular. We call it third person singular, but it can be a thing and it can be a place. So I walk, you walk, he, she, it, walks, it gets the S at the end, you, plural, walk, we walk, they walk. But in the past, all of the verbs remain the same ED. So you don't have to think about changing this for the subject in the past. Remember, this is the simple past. Um, there's also a past, a past participle, but that's for another lesson. I don't want to make it too confusing. So I would like you to focus on the fact that when you change the subject and make different sentences with the subject, use your verbs in the past. For example, my daughter walked to school yesterday. My husband worked last night. So make some more sentences using the verbs that you have, but change your subject examples. Okay, and I'll give you some examples and then remember, always say what you write. Say it, say it, say it. Okay. Hi, it's Randy. Today we're going to talk about regular verbs that end in ED in the past tense. This is for your pronunciation and for your spelling. So most of the verbs are regular. There are also irregular verbs, which will be another lesson. So, regular verbs end in ED in the past tense. There are three different ending sounds. Most verbs are regular. It's the three different sounds that we're going to work on today because they can be a little bit confusing. So, if you get confused, you can always push pause and work on the worksheets that I'm going to give you and then review again. So let me take this board away. The ending sound in regular verbs in the past, past tense, sometimes sound like a T, sometimes they sound like a D, and sometimes they have another syllable and they sound like id. So, for example, if you have the verb walk, in the past, the ED sounds like walked, walked. And also notice it's one syllable, walked. When you have a word like play, the ending sound sounds like a D, played. So the sound is played. And this is also one syllable, played. So, walked, played. If the verb in the base form is written and ends in a T or a D, then the ED past tense sound sounds like id, but it becomes another syllable. So, for example, this would be waited, needed. Don't confuse the writing of a T and a D with the fact that we have a T and a D here and we're talking about sound. Very important to remember that. Here we're talking about the ending sound and here we're talking about the written word and another syllable for the ED. So once again, walked, played, waited, needed. So the question now is why do we have three different sounds? The reason is because of this sound that precedes the ED. 
This is what's called voiceless. There's no sound when you make a K. Walk. T. So when you continue with the ED, you also don't have a sound. The vibration won't, there won't be vibration in your throat. So if you say walk. T. This has a vibration. Played. You feel vibration. So when you continue the ending sound, there's no vibration in the D. Or there is vibration in the D. Played. Played. In this one, your throat actually closes when you finish the word. Wait. You've finished blowing the T sound or the D sound. Need. And then you need to open your mouth up again to make the ending syllable. Waited. That's the rule. You don't have to memorize the rule, but it's good to practice. So I'm going to put some words on the board and you're going to write them down and then do them yourself and then I'll show you the answers. Okay, so these are your words that you're going to decide whether the ending sound is sounds like a T, a D, or an id. But I'm going to go over them now and then you can write them down, pause it, put your answer, and we will go over these answers together. So let's say the word walked, played, danced, waited, wanted, talked, planted, needed, stayed, answered, loved, painted, worked, fixed, mailed, planned, explained, and finished. If you don't know what all of these words mean, you can look them up in a dictionary, but remember you're looking at the base form. You won't find it in the dictionary in the conjugated form in the past, so you would need to look up plan or explain or, or finish if you didn't know what that means. Okay, so now here are the answers. Walked. Is that a T sound, a D, or an id? It's a T. Walked. Played. That's a D. Danced. T. Waited. Two syllables. And that's an id. Waited. Wanted, two syllables, and that's an id. Talked, one syllable, and it's a t. Let me go back and do one syllable. One syllable, one syllable, one syllable, two syllables, one syllable. Planted, two syllables, Id. Needed, two syllables, id. Stayed, one syllable, d. Answered, this is an, the first syllable is here. So even though this is two syllables, this is not. So answered would be answered, and it sounds like a d. Notice the W is silent. You don't hear the, the W. It is not answered. It's answered. Answered. Loved. One syllable. And it's a D. Loved. Painted. Two syllables. ID. Id. Painted. Worked. One syllable. And it's a T. Fixed. That's to repair something. One syllable. And it's a T. Fixed. Mailed. I mailed a letter. One syllable. And it's a D. Planned. One syllable. And it's a D. Explained. Two syllables, but the syllable is here. Explained. 
and it's a D. Finished, finished, it's a T at the end, finished. Oops. But your syllable is here. Finished. So that can be confusing, but the sound is the important part. I hope you enjoyed that. We're going to do sentences next with these same verbs. You're going to put these verbs into sentences, okay? Okay, we can start. I hope you had fun writing sentences. These are just six examples of what I did. I want you to keep going, but remember, always, always, always speak your sentences out loud. Say your sentences. I wrote these because I want you to get into the habit of using different subjects. These are the subjects. This is who is doing the action or who is the agent of the action. So I walked to school yesterday. Here I've indicated the specific past. My husband, third person singular, but past tense verb, my husband painted the fence last year, a specific time. Lillian and her husband danced at the party. There is no specific time, but I'm indicating the past. We wanted coffee from Starbucks. There's no past here indicated, but the sense of wanting something is in the past. For example, maybe you asked someone for coffee, they brought coffee from Dunkin' Donuts, and you look at the coffee cup and you say, oh, we wanted coffee from Starbucks. The event has already passed of getting the coffee. You're talking about that you wanted coffee from Starbucks. That's another way to use the verb. They waited for the bus for an hour. She mailed the letter this morning. So this is a t time, specific time. This is for how long something, somebody waited. So notice the difference in how the verb is used and Keep practicing, keep writing, but keep saying the sentences out loud. Okay, good job. Hi, it's Randy. Thank you for joining me. I just want to do a quick little lesson on using the auxiliary verb with verbs. An auxiliary verb is a verb that can be used as a helping verb with the main verb. I'm not going to go into all of them. That will be for another lesson. I just want to explain something about how to use an auxiliary verb with the past. And it can be confusing because your verb, your action verb is going to stay in the base form. So for example, the word did is the past tense of the verb do. Now remember, do is an unusual verb in English because we use it for so many things and it can take the place of another verb and it can mean different things. For example, if I say, what do you do? That actually can mean, what do you do for work? What is your job? If I want to know what you are doing and I call you on the phone and I say, what are you doing? That means, what are you doing? Are you having coffee? Are you doing homework? Do is a really unusual verb in English. This is the present and it can be used a lot. So that will be another lesson. So did is the past. So for example, I can make a sentence asking you a question that happened in the past, but the main verb will stay in the base form. So I could say, did you eat? That's a question. I could say, did you go? Now these two verbs happen to be irregular. And you can answer, yes I did, or no I didn't, if I'm talking about eating or going. But what I want you to notice is that this verb stays in the base form. But we're talking about the past. That can be very confusing. I would like you to do some sentences. Remember, always say your sentences. I would like you to do a sentence with the ver following verbs. Eat, go, have, 
make some sentences that will make sense, like, did you have a good time? Did you have money? So use eat, go, have, drive, drink, and come. Please make some sentences making a question using these verbs which happen to be irregular. And then we're going to talk about how we can make some sense of the irregularity in the past. Okay, good luck. Hi, okay, did you have fun writing sentences? Remember, every time you write, be sure you say the sentences out loud. These are just the sentences that I did. I'm sure that whatever you did is fine. See, there's that word did again. We use that, ver that verb do and did all the time. So my um, sentences have, some of them have indicators for time, but they don't have to because your main verb is going to indicate past. But they all begin with the question did. This is for the past. Did you eat? That's the main verb. Did you go? That's the main verb. That's the action. Did you have? Did you drive? Did you drink? Did you come? And on these, I have an indicator for the time. So did you eat dinner last night? Also, don't forget to always have a question if it's a question. Question mark. Did you go to school yesterday? Did you have fun at the party? Did, you, did he, now remember this is the subject, so this doesn't change with your subject. It could be, did I, did you, did she, did he, did it, did we, did they. That will stay the same. And your main verb will stay the same. These are not going to be conjugated. Remember, third person singular gets an S. So. Did you eat dinner last night? Um, time, time, no time indicated, time indicated, time indicated, no time indicated. This is what makes it a little confusing. If it's a simple answer, yes I did, perfect. Make sure you put your period. Or no, I didn't. There's your negative. You can have a no here with a comma. You have to separate it with a comma though. This is your did not. Of course, as you know, a contraction, this stands for did not. It stands for did not. That is your negative. There's your no, your negative. You can have this only when you separate it with a comma. There's only one negative in a, in a sentence in English. We don't do double, double negatives. Okay, now, what's confusing about past tense verbs when you have something like this is that if I'm then going to tell you what I did instead, then I need to put my action verb in the past. For example, let's look at this again. Um, for example, did you go to school yesterday? No, I didn't, but I went to school last week. Now my verb go is in the past. That can be very confusing and I'm going to give you a lesson on the irregular past tense verbs. Just take your time. Don't be nervous about it. You have to memorize them, but you can do it. So let's look at the irregulars. Let's say that I want to talk about everything as a yes. Um, did you eat dinner last night? Yes. I ate fish. So, yes I did. 
I ate fish, or we could take that away. That's a new sentence, though. Did you go to school yesterday? Yes, I did. I went at 9 o'clock. Did you have fun at the party? Yes, I did. I had fun with my sister. So you're making, as you develop your sentences, you want to become proficient with being able to say those past tense verbs easily. And we're going to just practice, practice, practice. So take those same sentences that you wrote when you did what I did here, these, whatever you did with these verbs, now I want you to answer it with a yes, I did, period, and then put that irregular verb into the past to give me more information. So let's talk about the past tense verbs right here. Eat, ate, go, went, have, had, drive, drove, drink, drank, come, came. And if you use it in a negative, and it's not a question, you still keep it in the base form. I had a lot of students that used to say to me, teacher, I'm sorry, I didn't came last night. But that's not correct, because your negative is already right here, your negative past. So it would be, no, I didn't come, just like in the other example. So write some more sentences, be sure you say them out loud, and good luck and have fun.